Hello and welcome to the Empowered Curiosity Podcast. Today's guest is Kayla O'Connor. She is a PR trailblazer and a human design reader, and she's going to share her journey of incorporating human design into entrepreneurship and her team and how that has transformed her business. One of my favorite things about human design is that it gives you the permission slip to be the most you version of you there is. And that ultimately helps you create a more fulfilling life, a more values-driven life. And that's ultimately what we want to inspire in the spiritual entrepreneurship community. However, in order to unpack that though, we have to be able to explore the shadow side of it, which is what does it feel like when you are operating out of alignment? What does it feel like to have to do the deep, brave work of deconditioning and learning how to trust yourself so that you can manifest your dreams. And that's what we're going to talk about today. A little bit more about Kayla is that she is the founder of KMO Consulting, which is an affiliate PR agency that operates with a focus on human design. She is a 6'2 splenic projector, which means that her natural instinct is to make impulsive decisions that often surprise others. And she talks about that in really beautiful detail on this episode. Her use of human design as an energetic business consultant helps CEOs and C-suite executives understand the importance of energy and frequency in business strategies, which results in happier and more productive employees. Now, if you are brand new to human design, my favorite place to pull up a free chart is geneticmatrix.com. So you can go on that website, plug in your birth date, your birth time, and your birth location, and it'll pop out your human design. And you can just have that up on your phone screen, or you can print it out as we're having this conversation. So there you go. I hope you enjoy this conversation with Kayla O'Connor. Welcome to the podcast, Kayla. I am so excited to have you on. We had just like an intro call. I don't know. It's been several weeks now at this point, and I've been just so excited. It feels like six months. Yeah. (laughs) We were just saying that, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I just feel so excited for this conversation because I feel like ever since that connection call, I like my own wheels have been turning in terms of Mm -hmm. like, ooh, how do we... How do we integrate this information? Mm -hmm. Um, So just for a little bit of context, uh, Kayla is incorporating human design into entrepreneurship and also onto teams. Mm -hmm. I've actually, since you and I have chatted, I've started taking a human design course. And so, yeah, I'm really excited about the whole system generally, but in particular, how we can sort of harness these permission slips within human design to help like folks find their way through business. So thank you so much for, for agreeing to have this conversation with me. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. That's very MG of you. Is it just like, have a call with me and be like, I'm going to take a course. Yes. I love that about you. I mean, no to anyone listening as an MG, if you like are introduced to a new topic and you feel like a little itch to like just take a new course and learn a new topic, even if it's like hard left, go, <laughs> go down that route. I was like, yes, MG, she took a course. Yeah. Um, I'm very excited. Yeah. And so I think that we can just stri- jump straight into like what yeah. we were just chatting about before we hit record. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to just give us a bit of context around what's mushing around in your brain, and then we can just roll from that. I think it'd be a good place to just play. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first off, I think something that was that just dropped in that I didn't mention before is I think with human design and when I first first off when I started my business as an affiliate PR agency, I used human design to help me feel good in in PR cuz I did not feel good before. And so I just naturally used human design as kind of my, what it's, what it's supposed to be used as, use it as my blueprint, as my guidebook to operate in a way that is unique to me, to where I feel good in the way that I do affiliate PR uniquely 
to me. Now the skills and the strategies in like the affiliate PR space, the masculine way is, is kind of, you know, across like the industry standards, they are the masculine way, but how I do it energetically is unique to me. And I, I made the promise that I was going to do it uniquely to me. So I felt good so that things we're going to just feel easy and flowy because mm-hmm. prior to that, they didn't. Mm-hmm. I had chronic panic attacks, um, extreme anxiety, you know, became a Reiki master just so I could heal my chakras and my adrenal. Um, I just, it, it felt, you know, very ill. And so I was naturally already integrating human design into my business and my own agency was kind of like my first client, my first case study. Mm. And I didn't realize it, but you kind of just get in your own head. Mm -hmm. And I became a certified reader February of 2022. And it didn't even dawn on me to go into businesses. (laughs) I was absorbing the coaching world. Yeah. And I thought I had to be a coach Mm -hmm. in order to serve. And it, I just kind of laugh because when I became a Reiki master, I thought I literally had to physically put hands on bodies to be a healer. Mm. But I think another message that's coming through is if we're just conscious humans, conscious entrepreneurs serving our customers, we are of service. Mm -hmm. We are healers without needing to quote unquote, be a healer. Mm -hmm. And so if you're integrating this as an entrepreneur, as a business owner into your business, you are of service. You are a healer because you are showing up as the highest version of yourself and being there for your team, being there for your customers in the highest version of yourself. And so I think that's a really powerful thing and a powerful gift to give to your team, to your customer, to the collective. Mm -hmm. So that, that just came through really strongly, but you know, if you're going to be curious about this, it, it is a, you have to take radical responsibility for yourself first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that, um, is, is a really important message to make is if you're curious of integrating this with your team to, um, start with yourself first, Mm -hmm. because we want to make sure that your role in what you're doing and how you're using your energy and how you're operating in your day-to-day tasks and what your role in your business is, is in the most aligned possible scenario first and foremost. And then we can start bringing in the team and making sure that the support you have supports you because the CEO is a direct tether to your business. Yeah. It's a, you know, so that's, that's where we started. Yeah. So just for context, what is your human design? Just sort of like the main yeah. touch points there. I'm a six, two splenic projector. Mm. Okay. Yep. So with 51 as the gate of shock is my sun gate, which your sun gate is like your sun sign in astrology. Mm-hmm. Have you gotten there yet in your course? Not yet. So I it's am a 5-2 manifesting generator. Um, sacral authority. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you're with your decision making, it's very in the moment mm-hmm. and it's very yes or no, this or that binary. Um, your everyone's sun gate, if you either look at the body graph and you see the, um, the, the two uh, columns. The, the two columns, yep, it's this unconscious and the conscious. Mm-hmm. It's going to be on the conscious, the personality side, which is and the, the right top hand number. Side. Right. Yep, the right hand side. Thank you. Yeah. The top mm-hmm. number. You're like mm-hmm. simplifying it down for me. Thank you. <laughs> um, and it's just going to be the first number before the decimal. Mm. That's going to be your sun gate. Yeah. And then if you look at the incarnation cross, that first number is also going to be the same number as the, the first number on the right side. Uh Yeah. So yours is 45, Mm -hmm. which is all about getting everyone on the same page, (laughs) (laughs) which very much aligns with the five, two self-motivated hero. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious about, if we can revisit that space that you were in 
where you were perhaps living your life out of alignment, Mm -hmm. where you were saying you were feeling anxious. What is it about that part of your life where you were not able to give yourself the permission slips that you needed as a splenic projector? Hmm. I didn't know I was. Mm. Yeah. So let's, let's, you know, back up to September of 2019. I was just, just bare, um, three months into moving to Los Angeles. I, um, moved from Minnesota. I was, you know, kind of escaping a life that was rough an on and off hard relationship. Um, I thought that, you know, moving across the country would kind of help, <laughs> so to say. Mm-hmm. I thought I would, I thought I got my dream job at this large PR firm, you know, a senior position. Um, all of my, you know, PR, chronic anxiety, um, symptoms would go away. I had done EMDR, intense EMDR, you know, this is a fresh start, Kayla. We're in Mm -hmm. LA. We're going to start fresh. And three months into it, it was not at all what I was. It was a total tower moment. I was going through my Saturn return Mm. and here I am senior position. I was promised everything. And I felt so incredibly unworthy and unseen. Now, Mm -hmm. nothing to that job. I think it was just like, I was really being shown like you're going in the wrong direction, Kayla. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was driving to a conference and that's when I was listening to a Jenna Zoe or a a Lacey Phillips to be magnetic podcast interview with Jenna Zoe. And that's when I found human design Mm -hmm. and I looked up my chart and realized I was a splenic projector. And I had, I had this like, oh shit moment. Now I was getting to a place of kind of desperation where I had drained my 401k to have some money in the bank Mm -hmm. because I had just moved. So I had not, I had nothing zero. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I need something. So I completely drained my 401k. Mm -hmm. That's definitely a splenic impulsive decision, right? Like who just makes that decision? Um, and after I found out as a projector, I had this like feeling of like, okay, I'm done. So I walked into my job the next day and I quit Mm. at 8 AM. I was like, this is my last day. I'm done. I knew that that job was not right for me. I did not know what was next. I was like, I am fully like surrendering. Here you go. Here I am. And Within 24 hours, I had this random text from an acquaintance that was asking me if I knew anyone who did freelance PR. Mm. And within 24 hours, I had my first freelance client that paid all my bills. Mm. And that was the first kind of evidence from the universe of being rewarded for standing in like your energetic worth. And it was a very strong lasting trust muscle Mm -hmm. That has kind of stuck with me, but it's been a trial and error, you know, process, Mm -hmm. um, and definitely a learning experience. But I would say the not self theme is what keeps me going. The not self theme is every energy type has a signature theme and a not self theme. The not self theme is often how we feel when we are making a decision or living a life out of alignment Mm -hmm. for generators and manifesting generators like yourself. It's frustration Mm -hmm. for projectors. It's bitterness reflectors. It's disappointment manifestors. It's anger. And the signature theme is how we will feel when we are living in alignment. Mm -hmm. So um, manifestors it's peace Yes. Peace. Yes. Um, Generators, manifesting generators, it's satisfaction. Projectors, it's success. And um, reflectors, it's uh, surprise and delight. Mm. Mm. I I love reflectors. It's like the surprise and delight. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So those two. 
because the the not self thing we when we feel good we don't pay attention to good feelings and that's when we have awareness and we're like present to like external things and we're enjoying life but when we don't feel good we're like we fixate yeah on like not feeling good yeah so the not yeah. self theme is powerful yeah absolutely so like honor that yeah and as you're speaking like it reminds me of the work that i do helping people find what i what we call the dao mm. so like the dao is kind of like a rough translation of it is your path what your way is meant to be what you are here as a soul to f figure out and puzzle out in this life that we have cool and I always contrast it. I, I actually lead all of my one-on-one -on -one clients on a meditation to help them figure out their like one word that is their Tao. And I always contrast it to their not Tao. Mm -hmm. And so like sort of circling back to what you were saying earlier of like your responsibility as a CEO is like to do the work yourself and to integrate within yourself before you start expanding and rippling out your team or expanding and rippling out into your community and so like my Tao is surrender and my not Tao is control. And so meaning when my life is not going in a way that feels aligned to me, I start trying to control all of the pieces, people, mm. experiences, things, all the things, right? And the word surrender has such a deep, meaningful, like, I have a relationship with that word because it's like my life plan, my business plan is to surrender, which is kind of a fucked up thing when like we're all connected to and, and intricately tied into capitalism that says that you need to be productive, that you need to be accomplishing things and needing to be successful in all these ways. And Yet over the last couple of years, I've learned that the more and more I can lean into surrender, that actually helps me create this life that feels not just more aligned, but like also I'm able to achieve some of those external markers of success in a way that feels more ethical and values driven to me. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's interesting how like all these systems are all talking about essentially the same thing. Like as you're talking about, um, you know, the, the, the self themes, I love reflectors as well. One of my close friends is a reflector and her Tao is beauty. And it's like, yeah, like that totally makes sense that like the thing that reflectors feel so like excited about that feels alive in their bodies when they're in their self theme is that sense of like awe and like surprise, right? Like what is more surprising than walking across in nature and finding a, a really beautiful flower or, you know, having the landscape open up into this really beautiful scene. And like, that's kind of the same energy that like my friend, her name's Natalie. Um, she's been on the podcast before Natalie Ross. Uh, like, like she's in search of that in her mm -hmm. life, you know, mm -hmm. and as she's more connected to that sense of beauty, like that is her, like, that's her Tao, that's her self theme, you know? And so I think it's just so interesting how like, the same paths up the same mountain or different paths up the same mountain, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's interesting. Your, your arrows at the top are all facing left, mm. which what is very mean? fixed energy. <laughs> so I love that you have the word surrender because yep. you do have a lot of active energy in you you know, and there is, you can be in surrender and in structure at the same time. Yeah. You know, does that resonate with you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like structured surrender, like, mm -hmm. like scheduling surrender time. 
you know, yeah, like that is your way of surrendering, Mm -hmm. like having your scheduled surrender, like, okay, this is my time to surrender. Yeah. I mean, I literally just came off of, like we were just saying, I came off of two weeks in Nevada where I went to go visit my friend who's also my horse trainer. And like, I, I, I wrote about this in, in one of my newsletters, but like, I've been hanging on to like a lot of grief, like my grandmother's not doing very well. And so like, I've been sort of like, not like white knuckling it by any means, but like, Mm -hmm. this isn't the right time to like, allow this, this feeling to like have full emotional expression. Mm -hmm. And so while I was in the desert, I just took a drive through the desert one night and like screamed like I Mm. sat in my car and I screamed and then I got out of my car and just like walked through the sand and screamed some more and cried some more where like you know they live in a really really remote part of Nevada and so I was all by myself just surrounded by these beautiful cactuses Mm. and the full moon and that's exactly what that was is like I knew like I think there was some part of my body moon was a big one too yeah and I think that there's some part of my body that knew like hey I'm gonna be safe to surrender in this place and so like totally let's hang on it's you know it's gonna be okay you know it's not like I was in a state where like I felt like I like really needed to access the grief it was just sort of like in there and needed to be expressed and Mm -hmm. sort of like needed the right environment and the space to do that. So yeah, absolutely. Scheduled surrender is, is, is my jam. (laughs) Totally. And that's like such a perfect example of like, no one would ever think of like you Google how to surrender blogs. (laughs) No one's going to have scheduled surrender (laughs) as a how to, Yeah, you know, but that is such a an individually aligned way for you to do it. And it mm-hmm. feels the best and the safest for you. Mm-hmm. And so that is where like, there's so like millions and millions of different ways to do one thing for each individual. Yeah, It's just getting super creative. Like creativity is like my, my, I'm, I'm realizing that creative solutions is like my thing Mm -hmm. and like empowering people to just the opposite of victim is creativity and everything Mm -hmm. in my chart, the more I even lean into like gene keys is like transmuting emotions and trauma through the, the art form of creativity. Mm -hmm. And instead of feeling uncomfortable emotions and doing the one of two things that we often do as humans, which is running away or numbing or trying to fix it, Right. allowing creativity, the form of creativity to just kind of, you know, transmute that in our, just be open to creative solutions, mm-hmm. create, you know, just something new to form. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what I love about that is like, when we're doing our work as practitioners, like we're asking our clients to look within themselves to find that creativity. You're not Mm -hmm. sitting here prescribing something for them to do. You're like, Hey, like I'm noticing these things. If you've worked with them long enough, it's like, we've been here before. These are the things that might be helpful. What do you think? You know? And so giving them an, the ability to respond and decide for themselves like, oh, actually, you know, I'm always telling people like, go paint or go for a walk in the woods, go do something with your body to move emotions. And, you know, one of my suggestions might not resonate with them, but they can use that as like a a launching point to be like, oh, but I can do this, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I picked up watercolor painting eight months ago, this Mm -hmm. is such a two line and you have a two line (laughs) Yeah, and our two line is in our conscious. And so I wonder if you resonate with this, but we'll just start something that we've never done before. I think, did we talk about this in our previous conversation? I'm not sure. Okay. Go with it though. Okay. Um, 
oftentimes is a two line. We'll just pick up something and people will be like, how did you know how to do that? And, and we'll be like, I don't know. I literally picked up a watercolor brush and just started doing it because I was going through a really, really hard and still am, but it's been incredibly healing for me with, with mm -hmm. my mom. And I realized that I could watercolor paint because I could fall onto the canvas and mm -hmm. it would just contribute to the watercolor. And I kid you not, three months later, I'm at an art show displaying my watercolor paints and and I have no idea how I have this talent, but twos are just born with innate talents. And it's a deconditioning of us to not feel like an imposter syndrome. And we have to see ourselves as gifted and mm -hmm. not validate and release the need to validate mm -hmm. and release the need to find um, our gifts externally yeah. And just know that we, when we're in the flow of creation, that's when we are exuding our, our wisdom the most. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I think I'd love to talk about conditions, not just for the, the two line. I, I definitely resonate with that in terms of like, how did you do that? And, and I think I always equated that with my manifesting generator-ness mm -hmm. of like, I don't know how to sit still. Like I always <laughs> have to be learning something new. I always have to be doing something new. Um, like the way that you feel about watercolors is how I feel about working with horses. Like I, mm -hmm. I feel like there's like just an innate sense of, of being able to like communicate with that particular kind of animal in a way that I think is, is different from, from other people. Um, mm -hmm. I relate to horses in a very different way. Um, but I think that that's kind of been the biggest permission slip that I've been able to give myself, um, using the human design system is like, you can, all those things that you thought were a part of you, like you're allowed to do all those things. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that this is probably a common theme with MGs is, like we come off as flaky. We come off as mm -hmm. people who mm -hmm. never finish projects. We come off as people who are always changing their minds all the time. And I definitely had a lot of shame and guilt around that. Um, I mean, even to the point where it's like, sometimes I'll commit to going out for coffee with a friend and then like last minute, it just doesn't feel right in my body that day. Or, totally. you know, like, and instead of having shame around it like being able to own all those parts of you yeah and the fact that I've had so many different interests over my life has actually contributed to my current work you know yes. I'm able to yes. pull so many different patterns and and things together in a way that feels really organized to myself but looks just like chaos to somebody else probably yeah. And so I think that it'd be really lovely to talk about the deconditioning process um, and what that can look like for people, because it sounds like you've done your own work around that as well. Mm, I love, love this topic and this question because it is so freeing. It is so freeing to just know. And well, first off, it is let me just say it is so freeing. Like it feels so freeing and to feel free is amazing. It is also scary mm -hmm. and it never stops being scary. And it's always a continuous thing. Um, I feel like once I kind of like crack a code, it's like, okay, now let's work on this. Now let's work on this. Right. Um, but I think the biggest thing when I introduce human design to someone, it's like oftentimes what they're told is wrong or weird or bad about them is what is like their most magnetic thing. Mm. And so it's, that can be the scariest thing. Like for me, I was always told I'm too impulsive or to give things a 24 hour rule. Mm. Being a splenic projector with the, gate 51 is the gate of shock as my sun gate 
in my prosperity gate, the gate of Jupiter is the gate of extremes. <laughs> I had my coach, um, my old human design coach, tell me to observe animals and how they instinctually move. Mm. And that's how I'm supposed to operate in my mm. business. And when I make extreme impulsive decisions, I move, move at the speed of light in my business. Like and give my wife a heart attack sometimes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it never, like I, I, it really does not fail me because I'm, it's like jumping off a building and knowing that you're going to be, you're, you're going to have a soft landing, mm -hmm. you know, the universe mm -hmm. is going to provide a soft landing. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's <clears throat> knowing that you're always trusted, but it's, trusting your body and your internal body signals and learning what those feel like versus mm -hmm. looking outside of yourself for the answer. Mm -hmm. That's where the not self theme, that's the getting curious. That's the honoring the feelings and, and it's the trial and error. That's where the not self theme is so helpful because don't be so hard on yourself. If you don't catch like your authority speaking up like the spleen is so hard to hear mm. and before i did child regression healing and worked on my subconscious like your subconscious rules everything until you really clear that up yeah so i couldn't even hear my body yeah. until i cleared that up yeah so i i will give an example um of you know, just recently where I, I really gave myself permission and it felt really good. I ended a, um, just like a service contract and they asked me for a testimonial. Mm -hmm. I love testimonials, but I felt at the time I didn't have like the words that would do the partnership justice. Mm -hmm. I waited six weeks to give them a testimonial mm -hmm. and I knew it, like I kept the email in my inbox. I was like, there's something coming. There's something coming. There's something coming. And it like hit me just last week. The perfect scenario happened that supported that service for the perfect testimonial. And it's like six weeks later, I just knew it. Mm -hmm. I was waiting for something. Mm -hmm. So like, don't second guess things that you're feeling in yourself. Like, trust yourself. Trust is a big thing. Like trust yourself. And if you develop trust within yourself, then, then that you really can't go wrong. If you trust yourself, Yeah, it really starts there. Yeah. And I don't think it's, I'm just going to like circle back to a couple of things that you said, because yeah. I think that they're applicable, honestly, to anybody, not just folks who have a splenic authority. Oh, absolutely. You know, yes. Of like being able to listen to your body, being able to discern is what I'm hearing in your story mm -hmm. is like discern what is an old story, perhaps from childhood, discern what is actually true to you, discern is this a should that society tells you, like even in that, that email scenario you were talking about, like, like it would stress me out to have uh, a to-do thing that I quote unquote <laughs> should be doing, um, yeah. sitting in you my inbox. You are recapping this beautifully. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And so like the real core juicy nugget of, of what you're sharing here is you can't go wrong when you're listening to your body. And so we mm -hmm. have to do the work in order to make that messaging as clear as possible. And for you, that splenic authority and like, please add to this because this is beginners like yeah, <laughs> understanding of splenic authority is like, it's tied to survival. A lot of times mm -hmm. it's this like intuitive knowing of like, I'm stepping into a room and I know exactly who needs support, like is how I've heard splenic authority people describe their gift. Um, and so yeah. like that does require an almost like instantaneous feedback loop from your body into action you know yeah and, and it's it's very quiet and it speaks once and it won't speak again mm -hmm. yeah whereas like I have 
a slightly different experience of like, I need to wait and respond. My impulse because of the conditioning is to just do the thing right then and there. Mm. And I have found that, and I think that this is the manifesting generator or is it a sacral authority thing? I don't know. Um, But it's the like, I have to wait, maybe even give it a full evening, maybe a week or so to like respond to the things So, okay, interesting. Let's unpack that. So let's rewind a little bit. So you respond to, so what are you responding to? You walk into a room and what are you responding to? You're responding to your sacral desire to want to help someone Mm. because you're conditioning as a five Mm -hmm. wants to help everyone because you have the energy to help everyone, (laughs) but the aligned thing to do is to tap into your sacral and to get really clear on what of these 10 people, if you know, your five wants to help all 10 of them, cause they're going to project onto you. Oh, you're the helper and you can help me and I need help. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to project all my problems onto this five because the five hero just walked into the room and she has all the energy in the world. <laughs> so come save me. And you're going to be like, you're going to respond to all 10 people being like, all 10 of these people need my help. So you're, you know, the generators and the manifesting generators, they all respond. So that's a generator and an MG thing, Mm -hmm. but, and your five is going to go off, but the, the aligned way of the five tapped into your sacral is going to take the quality over the quantity and really get clear of, okay, you're going to ask, you're going to go one by one of all 10 people and you're going to ask your sacral, yes or no. Do I want to help this person? Yes or no. Do I want to help this person? Yes mm-hmm. or no. Do I want to help this person? Because it's a desire. You need mm-hmm. to desire to help this person Yeah. versus just helping everyone because you have the energy too. Yeah. Um, that's actually like a pretty accurate way to talk about like the 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 trajectory of my work is before I was a coach I was an acupuncturist Mm. and I'm very good at that you know it's it's a skill that I'm really proud of having cultivated in my life and towards the end of my career which I had done that for 12 years I started to lose a desire to help people in this way Mm -hmm. And I had this like, oh, this like gut wrenching, guilty feeling of, but I'm good at this. I should be doing this for people because I'm good at it. Instead of asking myself, like, who are the exact kind of people I want to support? And, you know, like it's taken years to release that story, but, you know, it's, it's been this interesting process, not necessarily of like, I have to draw more and more and more and more people into my world. It's really about having the discernment of saying, yes, this person is for me. No, this person is not for me. And so I feel like that scenario that you just walked us through has been like my career is, is, is releasing people from my support in Like, of course, with love, but also recognizing that the, the, the boundless energy that I seemingly have is an illusion. Mm -hmm. You know, we, none of us have like a never ending well of energy. Mm -hmm. And I think that as, as a sacral authority, I tend to think that I have like, that's like a, a resource that I should be able to just like tap into, but, um, as I've gotten older, maybe uh, my body is starting to slow down, but then also my capacity to have the patience to help everyone has has started to like diminish, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Totally. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. No, that totally makes sense. And your strongest sense being a tastemaker, it's like you have a very specific taste in, 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 in how, like refining how you like things Mm -hmm. like refinement, 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 refinement. And I think 
if I was working with you and you were going to hire someone, it's like getting soup or soup. I have a client that both of them are tastemakers and it is, they are so, so, so particular Mm -hmm. with like who they work with Mm -hmm. and, and empowering you to be so, so picky and so particular with who you work with or who's on your team. Like, and you're also a specific manifester, like who's in your, who's in your circle matters. And you have some centers that are open that I, you know, you absorb a lot of energy in, in some centers that, you know, the emotional center and the spleen, um, the solar plexus and the spleen and the root, you know, if you're working with someone that is an emotional authority, that's totally okay, but they need to definitely communicate and take radical responsibility for their waves. And, you know, if you do hire someone that is out of, not out of whack, but like has high anxiety and isn't taking radical responsibility for, you know, grounding their energy, you're going to be absorbing that at twice the, you know, so like these things are important to know. And so empowering you of like, you aren't too picky when you feel like canceling plans, cancel your plans. It's like all of these things are just who you are. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause I, I pulled up my, um, my business partner's chart just now and he and I are pretty similar. Um, he's also a five, two manifesting generator, but he's got oh, cool. the emotional authority. Okay. Um, and you know, like that, that sense of like, you've got to take responsibility for your own feelings has been like Mm -hmm. a big theme in our relationship actually. And so it's really helpful to know. Um, I think I moving forward because I'm just a nerd about this now, um, I'm probably going to pull the charts of, of everyone that I work with. Mm Mm-hmm just so I can get a sense of like, Hey, like where do I maybe need to show up in a more grounded way so that I can support this relationship? You know, totally. I, you know, I've worked alongside an emotional authority for almost two years now and gotten to a point where almost for the past year, we've had her emotional wave in our calendar, in our shared calendar. (laughs) So I know the four to five and each emotional wave is different. But I know every month, these four to five days, her emotions are heightened and she just shows up at 80% what she normally is. And, um, you know, maybe, and it just has that layer of awareness for me. So Mm -hmm. maybe I just don't communicate with her via phone or video call. So I'm not absorbing her emotions that are heightened. Yeah. And so... It's, it's, you know, emotional authorities are beautiful. They are what put emotions, emotions are color. Yeah. They are what put emotions on our planet. You know, Mm -hmm. they are why we have, like, if you really think about it, they are why we kind of have emotions and color in the world, Mm -hmm. but it can feel really, um, kind of like overwhelming if, we hop on a video call with a team member that's emotional authority. And if they just don't have awareness over their chart and they're going through an emotional wave and then they're seemingly happy because they're, they can pretend very well, but we're absorbing their emotional wave at two X that they're feeling. And we're like, what is going on on this call? How, why am I all of a sudden super anxious? Like why am I, then we, take it on as ourselves and then we start getting in our head, it just eliminates all of that. Yeah. yeah. And I'd say that too, like, not that like I need Andre to like control his emotions, but oh gosh, he, no. you know, he and I were partners before we started working together. He's now my best friend. We're no longer romantic partners, but we kind of used to joke that he went through like a werewolf time like every Mm -hmm. month and we called it werewolf time. Um, That's so funny. Yeah. And like, we just sort of named it because he'd wake up. He has no idea why he's 
sad that day or yeah. anxious that day. And there's like, we'd go through the list of things that it could possibly be. And it was just like, never like a logical thing. What I've loved about our relationship though, is like, he now has, and it's not necessarily, I don't think it's through human design. He doesn't really like get into the human design thing, but it's more that he's become aware of his emotions and he's able to communicate them so that like what he actually needs in those times is for me to like, just give him some space. Mm -hmm. And so totally. like, like he's, he can go through that emotional wave on his own and he doesn't need my like nagging support sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so, and so I think even just having the awareness of like, Hey, I'm having a feeling this is what I need right now. And being able to communicate that to the people around you, whether it's in a romantic relationship or in a business work relationship, I think is yeah. so, so beneficial. Yeah. 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 And he, with decisions, he is the 24 hour rule with big decisions. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes even longer, I would say. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just so fascinating when we start pulling up the charts of people we spend a lot of time with. And like, you know, sometimes I spend more time with Andre than I do with my husband just because of the nature of our work. And, mm -hmm. and so being able to like pull up these pieces and be like, Oh, what need is not being met? What need can I support even more? You know, mm. what, what is going to help this person feel more in alignment and how can I communicate in such a way that I feel most aligned and my needs are getting met too? Oh, and I yeah. think that, that, that the human design system is really, really helpful in being able to do that. Yeah. My wife is also a splenic projector and she only has two centers defined, a spleen and a root. And I have, I'm very defined, mm -hmm. poor thing. <laughs> like I'm all the way like crown ajna throat g center um spleen and root but i'm a triple split mm -hmm. so i think that's probably the hardest with me is just needing to be around other people for that consistent energy flow mm -hmm. versus the disconnect of energy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just for people who are not super familiar with human design, like my understanding is that when you have de defined centers, meaning like if you pull up your chart and it's colored in versus having an undefined center yeah. where it's open, like the undefined center is going to absorb the energies of those defined centers in a more sort of like amplifying way is how I understand it. Yep. So think of your, when you're pulling up your chart and you see centers that are colored in, think of those as like your strengths. Mm -hmm. You have consistent energy and consistent access to those, you know, centers and then centers that are open or white. That's, um, there's like a, always like a high and a low vibe way, low expression way of looking at these, of course. But um, it's always good to be aware of the open centers. You're more likely to have conditioning there, but also you're able to have a lot of wisdom. So you're because you absorb so much, um, you're able to gain wisdom on how other people feel. So with your coaching, you you know having an open solar plexus and an open um, uh, spleen, you really understand how, you know, how your clients feel and like, in like in, help them with, you know, the spleen is interesting. Yes. It houses like fears and safety, but as humanity has e evolved, we're not so much in like a life or life or death safety standpoint. It's really evolved in like this forward intuition, like intuitive forward thinking center, right? It's, it's the oldest center in the body, but it's not so much a like save, save my life 
as much. Of course, it holds our fears, but it is really powerful in the intuition yeah. standpoint. So I, I think that is really, really powerful for you to have that open. And then the crown, like you're able to really tap into like higher thinking, higher, higher vision. Like, of course you have like this process that you go through a meditation with your clients and like, that's so in alignment for you from like an open center standpoint. So that's, um, you know, it's looking at your chart and any team members, like put them on top of each other and see, do you kind of fill a full chart collectively together mm -hmm. or, you know, how does that look and how does the energy kind of match up? Um, one thing I do call out a lot that's really powerful is the sacral in business. I kind of rule of thumb say, regardless to, um, try as much as possible, if, if not at all, to, to avoid saying yes to contracts or new business agreements live uh, or on the phone or in person, because you just don't know if you're a non-sacral or the other person's a sacral or vice versa, or if you are a, if you are a sacral and you feel comfortable, um, that's up to your discretion. But if you are a non-sacral, I would say to kind of put that into practice because you don't want to innocently just absorb someone's sacral desire to work with you at twice the frequency and then to, you know, be cut off from their energy and be like, I actually really did not want to work with that person. Mm. I had to learn, learn that the hard way. And I was saying yes to some brands that I was like, why did I do that? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's so interesting because I, I feel like in the coaching industry, there's this, I don't even know what to call it, but there's this idea of like, like if you get someone on a sales call, try to close that sale at the end of the call, no matter what. Like I've heard that from so many business coaches and that's never felt right to me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, A, it feels like unnecessary pressure into yeah. a system that is not really going to benefit from pressure. Yeah. And you have an, you have an open route. You don't like pressure. Yeah. Yeah. You feel if someone feels pressure, you absorb that pressure at 2x and you're like, oh my gosh, this feels so yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just, I couldn't do that in a way that felt in alignment for me, you know, mm -hmm. um, even though that's like kind of the advice that is unquestionably given. And yeah, like it makes logical sense. Of course, you want to close every sale. But to me, it doesn't make sense on like an intuitive, moralistic space because people are complicated. Lives are complicated. You don't know what's happening in that person's life that may lead to a no. Um, sometimes I've sat with the conversation overnight and then emailed them back in the morning and been like, you know what? I sat with it and I actually think you would benefit so much more from my friend's program rather than mm -hmm. mine, you know? And so giving people the, like to really truly be in service, I feel like the right person has to land with the right product at the right time. Mm -hmm. And so like, if your product is not the right product for that person, it's doing them a disservice to just push them into closing out that sale just because that will make your numbers better because it's going to pay your employees because all of the reasons. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and I've found that actually I've been ending my calls with a choice um, for my clients, my potential clients and being like, Hey, like, let's both sit with this conversation. Um, I'll be really honest about whether it felt like a yes or a no for me. And um, if it felt like a yes on my side, then I'll be like, do you want me to follow up or do you want to be the one who follows up in a couple mm. of days? And then giving them that choice um, because I, I think that there's, we're already living in such high pressure systems, especially mm -hmm. in the coaching industry. And it's like, we don't need to be 
re-traumatizing people through a sales call. That felt like such, that felt like a hug to me. <laughs> and it, I, I really, it really did. And I, yeah, the energy of that felt like a hug. It, I completely, I completely agree. And I had, I, yeah, it's unfortunate because a, a past coach of mine, um, a, a long, long, long ago, ago, I, I caught up with her and I was so excited to just have a conversation. And then it ended up being like a one, like a very turn of events tried to be like a sales, like, mm -hmm. well, I have an opening and it was, it threw me off completely. Yeah. And it, you know, it just, it's hard to like shake off that energy of the coaching, mm -hmm. you know, of the, of the coaching space. And it's a, I love it. I've had like three coaches at a time before it's, it served me and it continues to serve me. And yeah, it's absolutely. so needed. It's so, so needed. Yeah. It's so needed. Um, but I just have to say that how you just put that felt like a hug and I love it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of how you and I connected too, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I feel the need to like have a just personal conversation with anybody that I'm either going to be working with, having on my podcast or collaborating with. I can't, mm -hmm. I can't get that sense just over email. Mm -hmm. And so I used to just say yes to people over email based on what they've written me um, because I was like, oh, this is the more efficient way to do it. But I've had a couple of interviews where I was like, I can't release this. Like this is A, not going to serve my audience or B, I don't want to be promoting this person to my audience because like I find that the trust that I have with my community is like the this that's like the most important thing to me is mm -hmm. like being able to have my community trust me. And so if they trust me and I have this person on my podcast and you know they sign up for their program and it turns out to be not in alignment for them, like I would not be able to I I just I wouldn't be okay with that you know? Yeah, totally. And, and so I've gotten into the habit of when people reach out for a podcast interview, I'm like, Hey, come on a 30 minute call. And like, let's just see and get a sense for each other's energy. And that's kind of how mm. you and I were able to say yes to each other is because I can get a sense of the person within the first five minutes. And then it's like, Oh, okay. So I like this person's energy. Do we have enough to like talk about like in terms mm -hmm. of like content and if the answer is yes at that point, then it's like, fuck, like, yeah, I'm so happy to have you on the podcast, you know? So you're effortlessly, so a, a big, you know, part of human design is in kind of going into my business is like how you feel when you're doing your job matters mm -hmm. and feeling, in my opinion, how, how we feel is like the 50% missing from corporate strategies mm -hmm. because how a person individually feels when they're actually doing their job, a feeling is a frequency that's get, getting a little, little, or, you know, get it's, it, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, totally. But a feeling is a frequency. And if your employee is pissed off while he's sending an email to a client, that frequency is low as, you know, hell, whatever. Sorry, you can't swear on this podcast, but it's not going to attract results. Mm -hmm. And that can affect the bottom line of a company. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, it's, that is going to become more and more important. And so you're just naturally doing that. Mm -hmm. just naturally organically doing that where getting on a call you're able to tap into your body as it relates to this person to see how do I feel mm -hmm. first and foremost and then you're checking in logically of like okay is the information there to serve my customers yeah 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 beautiful and I think that this is just a theory and you can you can push back on it for me I love it when people poke holes in my stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like my theory is that like as we're entering into a space and a time period where we're able to talk more freely about traumas and toxicity mm. in our culture and actively working to untangle those pieces, you know, 
the marketing that used to work 20 years ago that pounded on pain points that just like, you know, pushed on these old traumatized narratives, like trauma attracts trauma. And Mm -hmm. so as the audience, as the customer base, the client base, however you want to call it, is learning how to integrate their own traumas, that kind of marketing is no longer going to Mm -hmm. be effective. And that's kind of, I think what you're trying to touch on there of totally like an employee sends out an angry email, it's not going to resonate. Like people are going to energetically pick up on that where we weren't quite able to maybe 20, 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. And, and the, we're just more sensitive, like the, just from like a collective, like energy standpoint, the, we're just feeling things and absorbing things more like we're surrounded by energy. Everything is around us. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're just like feeling things more like things are hitting us more and we're, and, and we're just entering like a time where things are like, and I think that is evolving with us. And one, and I think the fear-based marketing is, is like you said, not working. And it's, also being shown with our younger generations of like, they're not going to stand for it either. You know, they're really leading a a new narrative and they really are the future. It's a really unique time too. It's the only time ever where there's been five generations in the workforce. Mm, Interesting. Which is really fascinating because our parents there was no social media. Mm -hmm. There was no internet when Mm -hmm. they were growing up. And Mm -hmm. so there's a huge gap even between us and our parents, but there's even a generation above them that are still working. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's just so, there's just so many different generations trying to work together right now in the workforce, trying to understand what words are appropriate these days, what aren't, how is society changing? What, you know, what is triggering these days? And there's a lot of education and nuances. And I think at the end of the day, loving compassion is what we all need to lead with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. (laughs) Yeah. And I hadn't thought about it in that context of like, like we live in completely different eras you know we have lived in very completely different eras you know and um like I'm a little bit older than you and so I didn't grow up with social media either and you know I didn't get that until I was in my 20s and so I think that there's and then like even myself talking to my friend who I was just visiting in Nevada um her partner is my lawyer, but also a good friend of mine. And like he runs, he's 75 and he's retired now, but he's done a little bit of contract work for me and he runs his business so different. Like we have to communicate in such a way that like is so different to me. Like Mm -hmm. he will not text. Like (laughs) I don't know Mm -hmm. anybody who doesn't text. And he was like, you like, how do you not have voicemail set up on your phone? (laughs) Like, and you run a business. And I'm like, I've never, you're literally the only person I've needed to set up voicemail for, you know? I know. So it's just such a fascinating way to look at like the, the world has changed so much in just a few years and even just not just what we communicate is different, but how we communicate is incredibly different too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. So it's, I, my mother-in-law is one of the top real estate agents in Chicago and she's 69 and she's kind of, she's definitely self-made and an entrepreneur in her way. And it's, she's an outspoken Assyrian woman, the first to go to college. Like she's just a badass and it's, it's really interesting because she's outspoken in, in like kind of the, the frustrations of 
keeping up with it all. And I appreciate it because mm-hmm. it helps me see, um, okay, so let me help, edu- you know, educate and let's have this conversation, this mm-hmm. healthy conversation. Mm-hmm. I, I love just having conversations with people that are open to it because conversations, whether you're on opposite ends of the spectrum, just mm-hmm. being able to have the conversation is, is what, is what will help us move forward. Yeah, absolutely. We've covered every single topic in this conversation. I, I, I feel, feel like, like we have. Um, <laughs> is there anything else that you feel like you need to like land in with that, that you're like, oh, I don't want to get off this call without saying this. Oh gosh. I, I feel so good about what we discussed. I think when it comes to human design, just there's no limitations. There's a lot of, you know, literature or stuff out there that might feel limiting, Mm. but there are no limitations. Mm. You know, a projector can work nine hours a day if if you're feeling good. So just don't feel like it's limiting yeah. at all. Um, I think that's just a really important thing to know. Yeah. And I think just to highlight what you had said earlier of like really feeling into your body. Like I feel mm-hmm. like that's like the most important piece for any, it doesn't matter what your chart says is like your body doesn't lie. Your body has a deeper wisdom and a deeper understanding of what's mm, maybe happening. That. Um, and so like, that feels like a really important thing to like finish this conversation out with, which you shared earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. How can people find you, my dear? Yes. I think my landing page is the best way to go. It's KaylaOConnor.com. It links out to everything. So Mm -hmm. that's the most targeted, um, And then my personal Instagram, again, links out to everything. It's Kayla underscore underscore O'Connor. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for hopping on and having this conversation with me and um, appreciate you and the the work that you're doing out there. Thank you. Mm -hmm.